Today we're going to be looking at Fisherman's Bay and where are you supposed to go on this map? What are you supposed to do in the light tank? I'm going to show you guys. This map is actually pretty good for lights. It just requires a lot of map awareness and knowledge and understanding of the whole entire map. The game as well, obviously, but you really have to know like how to take these locations effectively because if you get caught out in any of these areas for where the, I've spotted their light, where I am right now, you're going to be in trouble. It's one of those high risk, high reward types of maps for the, you know, good spotting locations. So again, this is Fisherman's Bay. We're in the Hawk 30 and we spawned on the south spawn, right? now. I came to this bush directly um, in order to outspot the Senlek here, which I just assumed this is where he was going to go because this is where a lot of light tanks like to go. And more times than not, you're going to be way better off spotting the western portion of this map than anywhere else on the map. It's just the way it works. It's the wide open area of the map. It's where your tank destroyers are going to need eyes, and it's where you should be. However, don't neglect the mid. If you feel that you have a tank such as the Hawk 30, or a tank that can kind of brawl. I always put brawl in quotations because you guys know how I feel about brawling in a light tank. Um, but you can try and come to the mid and try an area like the 122TM um, is trying right now. You can run through this little, there's a little bush line right here. If you see this bush line, you can try and make this work and outspot people like the FE4202 because this bush line that I came to is very risky and honestly, I would not even try this if you're in a tank as big as the Hawk 30, like if you're a newer player and don't really understand the game mechanics as much because this bush is it's very difficult to take. I can only get to it about half the time because what happens is, and I'm going to draw this out for you guys, let's actually pause here and I'm going to draw this out for you. Um, in this corner right here we have like the FV4202, right? And as you approach this bush like this, you have to be very concerned about a light tank that might also come to where the FV is, or I've seen a lot of light tankers come through here like this and make an active pass like that through kind of the city area of this map, through the, the center of the map, the mid. You have to be very, very cautious of this, guys, because if you get lit here, people that are approaching this way like they're going this way and approaching this area of the map they're gonna have shots at you they'll literally stop and they will take all these shots at you the only thing that's kind of keeping you safe is this bunker but you're gonna be exposed here to everyone and even people in this area you're gonna be exposed to as well if someone comes to this area like this is just a very risky bush in my opinion and a lot of people like to take it because it can counter this area of the map extremely well this area of the map specifically this bush right here if you're on your iPhone or whatever you might not be able to see this very well but this area of the map is vital for a light tank on the enemy team because from here they can spot this entire thing and in my opinion you coming from the coming from the south spawn you actually have the disadvantage because this spot in my opinion is much easier to take than this bush right here it just so happens that i was able to get in here i wasn't spotted by the fe4202 because he wasn't there yet and the way i approached this bush is perfect right it's like the most optimal path i took to get in here um in order to not be spotted by the Senlek. So when you get to this bush, the way you want to approach it, and this is getting really technical, but I'm telling you, this will help you out. You don't want to come into the bush and go like, do something like that, right? You don't even want to come at, come at it like from this angle, right? The way I came at this bush was to basically take it directly like this to keep the bush in front of me at all times in order to prevent someone from over here to be to spot me so you almost have to be driving and as you're driving towards the bush you want to determine where the senlac might be if he's going to be coming to this bush this is how technical i am and how analytical i am with world of tanks guys that i drive up to the bush and i try and keep the bush like it's almost like um again anticipating where the Senlek is going to be as if he's spotted, right? And I'm trying to figure out like how I can stay in the bush perfectly as he's approaching this bush as well. So I kind of come at it 
it's like so technical guys i come at it like this like i'm kind of driving like this i'm like all right he's probably there now so let me just keep coming and then you slide in and you keep this bush like keep the bush in between you and where he might be like people don't explain this stuff fully that's why i love to explain this stuff fully to you in this game for light tanks because you have you have to be this exact sometimes in order not to get spotted so you see how i slid in here and then i kind of tucked myself in later and you can see the way i'm in the bush how i have the bush more on this side than i do on this side and even so lemming rush said this once i believe that this bush the way it's actually designed is it's there's basically like a a marker box or a hitbox. You guys have heard of hitboxes, right? Um, if you've played any kind of like fighting game or whatever, it's almost as if this bush is slightly bigger than it looks, right? Like the concealment will will actually go out a little further than the bush sticks out, if that makes sense. And it's it's very hard to to explain this in a video, but again, it's almost like this bush is bigger than it than it actually appears in the game. So I think you're safe to kind of poke out of it a little bit. Um, and the way I'm sitting in it like this, like is perfectly fine. You have all the concealment of the bush. It's clear because I didn't get lit here, right? So. All that aside, guys, I hope that helps you out. Again, you can skip my explanations of this if you're. A really good player and you already know these things just skip them but my content is to you know really help out the newer light tank players right um i want you guys to really understand all the game mechanics and i want to talk through everything so much so something so simple as just approaching a bush in a particular way to not get spotted right so we're here look how much spotting damage we're getting this bush is very very powerful yes but i hope that this helps you understand how the bushes work how concealment works and how you need to be approaching certain areas of the map in order to counter enemy lights and also to counter enemy tank destroyers and spot them for your team because look we have a crap ton of people sitting behind me we have a lot of, of people who can support me here this scorpion is probably one of the best and he decides to poke out kind of stupidly this fight over here is a brawl i don't want anything to do with this right but look we spot the su-130 here as well and we're going to continue spotting this um this map eventually or this side of the map rather but eventually what i notice is that these guys might need help over here so you'll see me eventually move over to there however when i run out of here i get lit and who spotted me here like who do you guys think spotted me here on the map and this is again you have to do two plus two equals four there's no way the su-130 could have lit me here right it's impossible he doesn't have the view range perhaps the t-69 was poking up and i didn't I didn't look over here and see that he was poking up. It might have been him that spotted me. Could have also been this Schwartz Panzer or whatever you call this right here. I didn't light him because he was behind the, the bush here in the corner and he lit me. So these are things that I like to try and look at. Like when I'm spotted and I'm, I even run out of this bush, as I'm approaching the next, um, like my next play, right? I'm looking back and going, how was I lit there? And I'm thinking, all right, it might have been the T-69. It might have been the Schwartz. I need to pay attention to this next time I get into that bush, right? And I like to do that. I analyze it, guys. Analyze it, assess it, learn from it, and um, that's how you're going to become a better light tank player. So here we have the VK-75, um, whatever. I'm the only, My only concern now is that the Schwartz might spot me here, but I take a shot. It doesn't really look like I'm getting lit here, so I think I'm safe to take shots at the VK, but these things are so OP, man. Like, the VK-75 has a really, really good frontal armor, especially when it's angled, so there's just no way I'm really able to take shots in this guy. So, eventually I'm going to advance here and just start pushing up, and I kind of want to try and find the Schwartz Panzer, right? That's what I'm doing here. I come to this bush line, and as I explained to you guys before, you can use this bush line to your advantage also to spot the west however it's not nearly as effective because it's a little further away and the angle is a little bit different however if you're nervous about taking this bush as i described at the beginning of this video you could try this bush line however this bush line is also risky 
Why? Because if you get spotted there, you're open to all these shots and you're going to try and tuck yourself in this corner and it's not big enough and you're going to get hit in the butt and etc. Right, guys? So this map is just all about risk and reward and you really need to find the sweet spot and kind of analyze that risk to reward ratio. You don't want to bite off more than you can chew, but you don't want to be in the back of the map doing nothing at the same time. So at this point, I'm going to help out these guys. Eliminate the IS-6. I'm not even needed. They basically run around this guy and they clean him up. And now I'm spotted for no reason, basically. But anyway, I'm going to keep advancing. And now that I know that the East is kind of open, I'm going to use this to my advantage. The only person that has been unlit on the map is the RHM Borsic, uh Waffentrager. Waffentrager. And I'm not really concerned about that because it's highly likely that he's in A1 area. He's in, in this corner over here. So what I'm going to do is keep advancing here with the Progetto 46. And I'm going to start... Um, trying to get into areas where I can spot the rest of this team. Now, here's the RHM. I'm actually going to poke up. I load an HE shell, and I'm going to smack this guy with the HE shell because the HEs on the, R uh, on the um, Hawk 30 are very powerful, guys. They're 102 millimeters of penetration, and they have 320 alpha. That was the lowest roll I've ever seen, just about. Progetto's kind of backing up into me here, and I'm like, dude, move. Get out of my way. I'm trying to advance here. But it is what it is. He didn't really see me coming. He's going to try and take a shot at the Schwartz Panzer, and he hits him. And this is why flanking is so effective, guys, because now we have control of the mid as well with the Schwartz eliminated. And now it's just a matter of cleaning up the rest of this team. So we're at 3,400 spotting. I want some damage now. I want damage, guys. So I'm going to start running in. I'm looking for the RHM. I'm going to poke up here, and we hit this guy right there. We don't pen him, probably because we hit the gun, but we still hit him for 144 is what it is. Um... My gun was just really acting up this game. I was getting very unlucky. You'll see here as well that I think I missed this shot on the M40. So I, I poke up here. I'm looking at the M40. I hit him. Doesn't pen the arty either. We only hit him for 101. And when I heard that destruction sound, I thought it was the Progetto eliminating the M40. But in fact, it was the M40 eliminating my Progetto. So now I have to turn back around, focus this shot, clean up the M40. I'm going to turn my camera immediately and start going after the Su-130 because I know he's in this area, right? But as it turns out, he pushes way up with the T-69. And we were just the better team here, right, guys? You know, this was... A team effort, it always is. I'm going to auto-lock the Su-130. I end up getting this shot here at the end. We end up with 632 damage. We did get two kills, though, and 4,100 spotting visible. So I hope this helps you out on Fisherman's Bay. Again, I always have to emphasize, we had the better team, guys. Right? You might have situations where your team is just not nearly as good, and you have to kind of retreat. And if you have to retreat, then I would suggest that you try and use like this bush line out here to your advantage. And then there's even little bushes right here that you can get into. On the map, look right here at around the GH3 area. You can try and use these bushes here and get creative so you can spot this area. You can spot people coming in like this. You can spot people coming in like this. And you can spot people that are poking from the city, right? That's a really effective area if you need to retreat. But in this game, we happen to have the better team and we advanced. And I think I helped my team um, very well in getting this win. Was it vital? Maybe not. Maybe this team would have won without me, but I think doing 4,100 spotting, um, we were really able to help the team here get a lot of shots on the west, and then we're able to also advance from the east instead, and these people are all paying attention to the north that are sitting here, right? So we're able to advance from the east. I'm able to clean up the RD, we spot the RHM and stuff, and that's how you're using flanking to your advantage and all that. So I hope this helps you out on Fisherman's Bay, and that's it. Let's take a look at the end plates, guys. So here we go, second class, 4110, 632, nothing was blind here. Here is the team score. Um, we had 979 experience. Again, we had, we had two kills, so that um, does help your experience. Someone once told me how this works. I believe the way kills work is that it it somehow multiplies your experience um, gained when you have a when you have a kill. I don't know what it's multiplied by, but. And don't even necessarily quote me on that, but that's what someone told me. Kills tend to help experience um, a bit. So. We were up by uh, up top here by experience. Again, the Progetto had a brilliant game. Passante had a brilliant game. You need good players on your team to win a game, guys. This is a team-based game. It's it's not a 1v15, man, right? You, there's the best players in this game only have like 60-something percent win rates. The best players. You cannot win every game, guys. 
don't sweat it. Um, if you have a bad game, just get out and move on. Don't get toxic in the chat. Oh, you guys are all terrible at the game. You know, do this and do that instead. Like, don't be these people, man. Just move on. Get out of the game. Get in the next game. It's a it's a free to play game. There are a lot of casual players. There are a lot of bad players on the on the game. Um, just to, just move on, right? Um, anyway, that's the team score, guys. Here's the detailed report. Again, nothing blind. And we got close to 5K combines, like what 4,700, 4,800 combined, something like that. When you add it all up, and I don't think this is a bad game at all. I do have the brothers in arms now on my crew on this vehicle, and I run the. Um, what is this? The Bounty Low Noise Exhaust. So I have like 41% concealment. Keep that in mind. That's pretty good for the Hawk 30. The Hawk 30 is a really big tank. Um, someone had commented saying that 40% concealment is nothing. I would argue against that. I would say 40% concealment is pretty good on most vehicles, but I understand what he means. In terms of a light tank, it's not insane, right? Like my... My even 90, when it's set up fully, has almost 55% concealment, and that is a good concealment number. But the Hawk 30 is a fat tank. You're not going to get any more concealment out of it. It's a big, fat tank, and that's just the way the game mechanics work, right? Like, if you could get 60% concealment on these gigantic tanks with great guns, like, the game would be broken, right? So, that's all, guys. If you're learning from this content and you enjoy it, do hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out. Like comment, share the video with your friends or whoever you think would learn from this particular um, type of content. That would also help me out and it helps other people out because it recommends the video more. And that is all guys. I hope you enjoyed. I will catch you for the next one. Take care and bye-bye now.